Thursday, September 24, 1959. For nearly two years now on Space Report, I've been giving you details on that enigma of the age, the unidentified flying object. Like the UFO that hung over Redmond, Oregon for at least two hours early this September morning. Now, where did you see this unidentified bright object in the sky? Can you point it out to us? Yes, it was right off in this direction, right out east of Redmond on the Prineville Highway. Uh, it came close to the ground and it stopped. And at that time, I pulled over to the side of the road and stopped the car and watched it. It had moved from where you first saw it? Yes, uh, it had moved in this direction, east, towards Prineville over Powell Buttes. Well, I'd say it was a, a round gold object that I knew it wasn't a star because it was too large. And uh, it was a little uh, above the horizon in the east, southeast. And uh, that's about all there was to it. And your sheep herder saw it? Well, uh, yes, a few days after that we were talking here. And he asked me if I saw that in the sky. And he said he saw it take off. And he said, just shot real fast to the east. Yes, do you, uh, do you believe in the uh, possibility of flying saucers? I believe in possibility of almost anything in the sky these days. You know, there's so many things that come to pass, and uh, the government puts so many things up in the air. The Air Force will not confirm reports that the Federal Aviation Agency log shows radar contact was established from two ground stations and that anywhere from one to four radar contacts were made by jet interceptors. One of the big-name private groups looking into the Redmond affair is the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon in Washington, D.C., who recently accused the Air Force of deception in their evaluations of UFOs. A member of their Board of Governors, retired Vice Admiral R. H. Hillencoater, urged that the Air Force be forced to reveal all their findings, stating, quote, it is time for the truth to be brought out in open congressional hearings. The Admiral is well qualified to bring out the truth. He used to head the top secret hush-hush Central Intelligence Agency. That the thing seen over Redmond might have been a real machine under intelligent control from somewhere in outer space has been pointed up quite dramatically by the instituting of a new and systematic search for intelligent life on other worlds. Called Project Ozma, the government-sponsored search has begun on the multi-million dollar radio telescope at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory at Green Bank, West Virginia. Dr. Frank Drake, who heads the project, states flatly that he expects to receive intelligent radio signals from planets of other suns. As Dr. Drake puts it, there's someone out there. We're not alone.